Some breaking news to tell you about going on right now. It looks like a chase. And Derek Bale is over the scene right now in Sky 9 for more information. Derek? That's right. CHP is chasing a uh, vehicle here southbound 5 through the Newhall Pass. We're coming up on the 14 freeway interchange. We don't know what this person was originally wanted for other than he was speeding real real fast and uh, the uh, CHP tried to pull, pull him over and he just continued on. We heard just moments ago that he hit uh, speeds of about 100 miles an hour as he passed by Magic Mountain. There you can see he's passing other CHP vehicles on the road making weaving through traffic we've seen this before just a moment ago we saw him on the right side of the uh, freeway that was on the shoulder going uh, 70 perhaps 80 miles an hour look at that very fast uh, uh, lane changes there across all lanes of traffic again southbound five he just went past the 14 freeway interchange look at this right up on people's bumpers there and we've seen this before people trying to get out of the way as best as they are able he's going to be coming up to the 210 freeway interchange and uh, that is going to be his next option to either change, uh, remain on the 5 freeway south or continue on the, uh, or go on to the 210 freeway. Again, it was uh, just about 5 freeway from uh, Newhall. Now back to you in the studio. And we have uh, joining us on the phone right now, CHP officer Saul Gomez. Can you hear us, officer? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can Perfect. you give us a little update on where this all began and how it began? Uh, well, actually, this uh, this pursuit started at uh, approximately 2:20 this afternoon, somewhere around uh, the five freeways southbound, uh, around the 138 Vista del Lago, and uh, the initial attempt to, to uh, it was made to stop this vehicle for excessive speed. Uh, soon after that, the vehicle never attempted to pull over and simply sped up. Uh, has been traveling at high rates of speed, using all using all lanes, nearly crashing into some vehicles and. Uh, uh, we have attempted uh, to uh, use uh, several uh, techniques to, to stop the pursuit. Unfortunately, uh, they have been unsuccessful at the moment. What have you tried so far, officer? Well, um, I, I can't go to the specifics as to what we've tried. However, we, we have uh, tried to uh, um, a couple of techniques that we have in our books, and uh, unfortunately, they've been, they've been unsuccessful. So what's, what's the plan uh, from here on out? From here on out, uh, the plan is to, uh, at the moment, uh, maintain a visual on this suspect uh one thing that is that is uh playing to our favor and to the motor motor safety uh motor traffic safety is uh is the fact that the traffic conditions are fairly light at the moment so that is uh, that is that is a good thing because obviously uh danger is minimized but at the same time the speeds tend to be a little higher so that's also something that we have to worry about and, and be cognizant of when we are uh chasing this person at some point, we might decide to back off and, and let the airship follow, and that's something that we might uh, actually consider in the near future. And, officer, have any of your officers been able to uh, see inside the car whether or not uh, he or she might have a passenger in there with him uh, or he? The report mm -hmm. that we have at the moment is that we have a solo occupant, approximately 30 years of age. Uh, that's what we know for the moment. We know that the vehicle is not a stolen vehicle for the moment. That also might, might change in the near future. Um, however, uh, the information that we do have is fairly minimal for the moment. Do you know uh, who this car belongs to? We do. We do have the registered owner's information. Uh, we don't know if the registered owner is uh, as a person behind the wheel. Uh, however, when uh, we do find out who they are in any circumstance, what we'll do is we'll deploy officers to, to that uh, vicinity uh, of the address located so that uh, uh, many times we find that these, uh, these folks tend to go back to the area which they know, which is in somewhere around their neighborhood or their home. And Officer Gomez, if we can just keep you on the phone here for just a second, I want to bring in uh, Derek Bell back in from Sky 9 uh, over right the here. head, over the scene. Uh, can you tell us uh, where this driver is uh, passing through now? Oh, I'm sorry, if that's uh, for Derek Bell here, I was talking to the tower here. We just cra uh, passed underneath the 118 freeway, continuing on the southbound 5. There's a lot of construction through the area for those familiar here. So he had to weave through uh, some of that traffic. It's going to get even tougher here as he continues south towards the 170 split. A moment ago, we heard the CHP call out that he was going about 115 miles an hour in the HOV lane. We saw him cross all lanes of traffic as we've seen him do it do before. Again, back to the left lanes, HOV lanes. He's got a little bit of uh, clear traffic ahead. However, it is going to jam up uh, heavily once he gets to the 170. That's about two miles ahead. He's going to cross that uh, that distance in just a short time going as fast as he is. Uh, estimated speeds right now about 80 miles an hour as he weaves through traffic again. Just a short look at this. He's going to get jammed in right here. He's really going to have to get on the brakes. Going across lanes of traffic, weaving through 
just as uh, quickly as he's able to do that. CHP, of course, right on, right behind him. They've got a handful of uh, patrol cars and uh, behind that, a couple of motor officers that are maneuvering into the area as well. Uh, don't know quite yet which way he's going to go, the 170 south, which is the Hollywood Freeway, or the 5 Freeway south. That uh, decision he'll have to make here in just uh, a few seconds. Uh, again, going very, very quickly through the heavy traffic here. He's going to have to really maneuver through the traffic if he wants to keep these speeds up. But look at this. It gets to an area here we just can't get through. And uh, he tries to force the issue with the uh, other people here, but the CHP, again, right behind him. And uh, looks like he's getting over to the right side here. If he continues on the right, he's going to go south on the 170 freeway. We'll see what he is uh, planning to do. And he will have to make that decision in just a couple of seconds here. Looks like he is continuing southbound on the 170 freeway from the 5 freeway. He's going to be heading into the North Hollywood area. Looks like he slowed down just a little bit as he made his way uh, through that area. Looking further down the 170, it looks like it's quite clear right now. So if he uh, can get uh, uh, through some of the traffic right here at the interchange, it looks like he'll probably be, be able to really pour on the coals. But look at this. He really has to maneuver through the traffic like that. Again, southbound 5 freeway from the, make that southbound 170 freeway from the southbound 5. Now coming into the North Hollywood area. Uh, we're going to have to talk to Burbank Tower here in just a moment. Hold on. All right, Derek Bell, uh, and Orch Guy and I keeping an eye on this for us as we continue to follow this uh, high-speed pursuit southbound on 170 freeway now. Uh, it started about 2.20, according to uh, Officer Gomez, up around the uh, Vista del Lago area at the 138 and the 5. Officer Gomez, you still with us? Yes, I'm still here. Do you, uh, you, you obviously have run the plate on, on, uh, on this car. Is it, uh, does it belong to somebody who lives closer to Vista del Lago or, or further down here, down south? No, the registration, uh, the, the, the registered owner is out of Los Angeles. And uh, oddly enough, that uh, appears to be the direction that we're traveling at the moment, or this person's traveling, and we're following. And um, uh, we don't know, uh, as I mentioned, if the vehicle is an unreported stolen vehicle. Many times that tends to be the scenario when it, the investigation is complete. We also don't know what's in the vehicle, if there's any other suspects in the vehicle, and uh, why this person is actually fleeing from us based on the conditions um, that we see, meaning the high rates of speed, the abrupt movements, and, and, and the abrupt lane changes. I mean, uh, this is something that we often worry about. If it was you or I, we would simply just pull over. But uh, this person uh, obviously is not in the right state of mind, and therefore, here we are. So this was not uh, a reported stolen vehicle, then? Not at the moment. Okay. And uh, as Officer Gomez mentioned earlier, the driver appears to be about 30 years old. Um, again, uh, as we, far as we know right now, not a stolen vehicle. The uh, pursuit uh, started in the Vista del Lago uh, area of the uh, 138 and 5 freeway. And uh, we've seen speeds of up to 115 miles per hour. Officer, at what point do we say this is getting too dangerous for even our officers to continue pursuing? Well, uh, f first and foremost, uh when we decide whether or not we're going to discontinue a pursuit or follow from the air, the number one thing is going to be public safety and motorist safety. That's going to be the number one factor for us. If we feel that the circumstances are too great and they, uh, the, the, the benefits outweigh the dangers, we are going to discontinue that pursuit or we're simply going to follow from the air so that maybe this, this person behind the wheel can uh, lower their speed and uh, drive with better habits, that is. Um, second, secondly, we have to worry about the person behind the vehicle. Make sure that if we do something that we don't, they, their safety is not compromised either. And obviously, officer safety is also a huge one. But I want to reiterate, what's going to dictate is uh, going to be public safety. That's 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 our most most pressing concern with any of these uh, pursuits. And uh, we're going to have the uh, appropriate number of officers on scene, whether they're motorcycle officers or patrol vehicles. And of course, our airship is also assisting us this afternoon. All right, and Derek Bell looks like you got off of the valley there somewhere. That's Roman. We're trying to get the uh, exact street that he got off here. Uh, he pulled into a building right here. Uh, we're going to try and get the street that he's on. The uh, CHP is uh, right behind him here. They've, uh, they know where he's gone into. The uh, LEPD and the Sheriff's Department have a helicopter overhead, and it looks like uh, it has come to an end here. They, he pulled right into this building here. We're going to try and come around the front side of it, see what uh, type of building it is, and uh, it may be a church, if I'm not mistaken here. We're going to try and get the street uh, that he came off here just a moment ago. Uh, the CHP is continuing to come into the area here, and again, they've got the helicopter that is overhead. Uh, as we come around the front. 
Okay, looks like he's, he's uh, on foot here. Hold on just a second. Uh, All right, uh, Derek Bell. We're gonna, uh, we looks like we lost sight of him here. Yeah, it looks like we're uh, losing some uh, view kind of the, from the building there. It uh, looks like uh, the car did pull off, however, off the freeway. Uh, very interesting because usually at this time of day, uh, especially before, uh, you know, traf prime traffic hours of the day, uh, you know, the 170 freeway into Hollywood is an absolute mess in the North Hollywood area. But it looks like... Uh, the driver was able to uh, evade the cars that were on the freeway and was able to exit and uh, pull into this uh, neighborhood. It looks like it might be a foot pursuit uh, going on here. Officer Gomez, do you, do you know anything more than we do? It looked like uh, we're looking at a foot pursuit here. Yes, at the moment uh, we are we are seeing uh, your pictures and uh, the suspect did uh, leave the vehicle at that, at that driver where he pulled into and he fled on foot. Um, we do have a canine deployed. This is a uh, uh, allied law enforcement canine, it appears. And uh, with their assistance, uh, we're going to go ahead and shut the shut the area down and look for this individual. So, uh, were was LAPD in pursuit also? LAPD was not in, involved in this pursuit. Um, they might have uh, they might have uh, been listening and therefore uh, respond to the scene at the termination of the pursuit. And uh, we we often uh, we often work with our allied agencies, LA Sheriff and LAPD. As you can see, the LA Sheriff uh, airship is up above, and they're assisting us with communication as well. Boy, my hat hat is off to you, you folks, in the coordination here because he just got off the freeway and uh, LAPD was right there. I, that's why I thought maybe they were in pursuit as well. Yeah, right there with their dogs as well. No, this was a CHP initiated the pursuit, and uh, we were at the termination point. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, without our LA agencies and, and, and collaborating with them, um, this this could not be possible. And uh, with their help, we're going to make sure that uh, we bring this to a conclusion. If you're just joining us live here on KCAL 9 News at 2, uh, this uh, seems to be the end of a high-speed chase that began on the 5 southbound freeway near 138 Vista del Lago area. We believe uh, the driver is around the age of 30 years old, uh, not uh, reported to be a stolen vehicle, but did reach speeds of up to 150 miles per hour on the freeway. Pretty uh, dangerous maneuvers on the freeway before uh, he exited uh, onto this, uh, this residential looking area here. Somewhere in the uh, San Fernando Valley, uh, Derek Bell was trying to get an exact location as to uh, what street we're talking about here. Something crossing the 170, and uh, as uh, Susie just pointed out, uh, he got off and it turned into a foot bail at that point. The uh, suspect running, there was a, an LAPD canine unit or two in the area there, uh, listening apparently to the chase, and uh, they're in there closing around, sur surrounding that building, cordoning off the area, and hopefully this fellow will be in custody here quickly. Yeah, we're very curious to see what kind of building that actually might be. Maybe a church, but it does look like there are uh, cars in the parking lot there, whether it's a business or a church or some sort of, uh, I don't know what kind of facility it is there, but uh, there are people there. So I'm sure uh, police are handling that situation as well. Officer Gomez, what, uh, assuming they have him in custody here shortly, what, what kind of charges uh, come to mind that he would be facing here? Uh, he's facing several felony charges, um, endangering the public, obviously, uh, exceeding the 100 mile hour speed limit and evading police just to name a few um, uh, of course and that's not to say what uh, what else he might have on his record whether it's uh, any other uh, warrant uh, or uh, drugs in the vehicle drugs on his person so that all can change but for now evading uh, felony evading uh, you can you can assure that's going to be one of them and uh, resisting if he resists at the end of the pursuit obviously the fact that uh, he's uh, he's evading um, he, he's actively resisting so uh, he can he can expect to face those charges, but as you can see, actually, um, uh, we have taken him into custody with the help of the canine. This is uh, a CHP canine, and um, and with the help of the allied agencies, we have located the suspect, and uh, he is in custody. Ah. And and this is actually a, a great termination. He didn't crash, and that's because our officers, when they noticed that the conditions were much too dangerous, they decided to. Uh, pull away from the pursuit, mm. and as a result, he was able to stop his vehicle and flee on foot.